Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany and welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I thought it would be fun to do some book of the month predictions for June 2023. So I posted a video earlier in the week of some new releases that are coming out in June that kind of took me down a little bit of a rabbit hole trying to think of what could possibly be some selections for June's book of the month selections or add-ons and that is what inspired me to make this video today. Now a couple of caveats here. I am definitely no expert on book of the month. This coming June is actually my fifth year of being a book of the month subscriber so I'm definitely a loyal subscriber to book of the month. I absolutely love their services and I think a lot of their selections are spot on. I have found some incredible books by subscribing to book of the month but that doesn't mean I am an expert on what they will or will not choose. In fact, they switch it up quite a lot. Just when I think I know what will be selected, especially in regards to repeat authors, they don't end up continuing with those authors. So I never really truly know what book of the month is going to select. And so this is really truly for fun. Also, there are going to be some books here that I didn't actually mention in that new releases video. That new release video that I post is primarily books that I personally am interested in or that I think my viewers are going to be interested in. So it's not meant to be a comprehensive new release list. So when I was researching books that could potentially be on book of the month's radar, for June, I ended up including several books in here that were not mentioned in that new release video. So don't think that just because you watch that new release video that there's going to be nothing new included in here because there will be. So you might end up finding some additional books that you want to add to your TBR. Additionally, these books are not going to be limited just to the curated five to seven books that they're going to release in June. I'm also thinking that some of these have high add-on probability. So whether or not they are added as the curated selections or as add-ons, I do think that there is a good probability that a lot of the books that I'm talking about today are going to be available come June 1st when we have the ability to build our book of the month box. So I have decided to break these down into five categories. One is going to be mystery, thriller, suspense. Then I'm going to have romance, contemporary slash literary fiction, historical fiction, and then fantasy and sci-fi. I actually don't have any as part of the fantasy and sci-fi category today so we're only going to be talking about the first four. I am limiting myself to five potential selections in each category just to make this a little bit more challenging. I definitely have a handful of books to talk to you about today so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Starting with the mystery thriller category, if you did watch that new release video, you know that the vast majority of releases that I included in there are suspense thrillers. It seems like June is going to be a very heavy month for thriller suspense releases and I am hyped for it. I am here for it. You know that it is my preferred genre of choice and there are a lot of great selections. So it was actually really really hard to narrow it down to five and I think I kind of took the easy way out because a lot of the books that I mentioned here are from repeat authors. So these are authors that Book of the Month routinely puts as part of their curated monthly selections or their add-on selections every single time that they come out with a new release. Now, like I said, they're not always consistent with it. So I literally have no idea what Book of the Month is going to do, but I do know that there are a lot of fantastic books coming out by authors that Book of the Month has featured routinely as part of their monthly selections. So the first one that I have to talk to you about today, of course, is Zero Days by Ruth Ware. My understanding of the story is that it's supposed to be a mashup of The Fugitive meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So you have a husband and wife duo, and in this book, they're not assassins, but they're kind of what they're called like penetration experts, like people hire them to get into highly secured locations. In this book, the husband of that duo dies and the police are obviously suspecting the wife. And so the wife has to go on a mission to prove her innocence that she did not kill her husband. I actually think this sounds highly, highly fascinating. It sounds different from anything that Ruth Ware has put out in the past. So I am definitely hoping that Book of the Month features Ruth Ware. I feel like they featured a large selection of her books in the past, maybe not as part of their monthly curated selections, but definitely as add-ons. And I'm certainly hoping to see her there. I am of course for sure hoping to see the newest Riley Sager only one left. Now here is an example of inconsistency on the part of Book of the Month. I believe that like four or five of Riley Sager's books have been featured as monthly curated selections on Book of the Month but then his most recent release The House Across the Lake if I remember correctly it wasn't even an add-on during its release month it came out as an add-on the next month. I could be wrong about that I could be mixing that up but all I know for sure is that his book was not featured as part of the curated selections for the month that it was released. So that is why I say that Book of the Month is definitely inconsistent in this and that's not a problem. I mean there are definitely a lot of other authors that deserve to be featured so I'm not I'm not necessarily mad about it but if I have all of like Riley Sager's books in Book of the Month editions I definitely need all of them to continue to come out in Book of the Month editions. You know what I mean? And the release that is coming out in June sounds absolutely phenomenal. I think that it's going to kind of be a take on the Lizzie Borden murders. It follows a main character Lenora who was 17 years old in 1929 when her family was brutally killed and everybody kind of thinks she had something to do with it and in fact she's kind of been reduced to 
to a schoolyard chant. It says, at 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope, stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. And basically since that time, she has never set foot outside of Hope's End, which was her family's home and is where the massacre took place. And now we're fast forwarding over 50 years. It is 1983 and Lenora is in ill health. She needs assistance. And so we're following home health aide Kit McDear, who is going to Hope's End to care for Lenora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. As Kit helps Lenora write about the events leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear there's more to the tale than people know. And I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to read any further. I am definitely intrigued to find out Lenora's secrets, what actually happened to her family, see if she really did have a part to play despite her denial. And I am hoping beyond hope that this is at least an add-on selection in June War Book of the Month. Another author whom I love and that has been featured before as part of Book of the Month's curated selections is S.A. Cosby and his newest release All the Sinners Bleed is coming out in June and I definitely think that there is a strong possibility that this could be an add-on or monthly selection. I will say that this book is going to deal with a lot of hard, hard-hitting themes. It's going to be dark, it's going to be gruesome, maybe even more so than Razorblade Tears and that book was incredibly gruesome and this one sounds like it's going to dive into deeper topics. It follows our main character Titus Crown who is the first black sheriff in the history of Charon County. He's a former FBI agent and security expert and he came home to take care of his father and look out for his troubled younger brother. He ran for sheriff to make a difference especially in the black community which has so often been treated unfairly by the police so I think we're also going to dive in the subject of police brutality here. But a year to the day after his election a school shooting rocks the town. A beloved teacher is killed by a former student and as Titus attempts to de-escalate and get the boy to surrender his deputies fire a fatal shot. So Titus is trying to de-escalate the situation but then ultimately his deputies end up shooting and killing the school shooter which of course is going to have its own ramifications. In the investigation, it becomes clear that the student they shot had been abused by the dead teacher as well as by unidentified perpetrators. The trail leads to buried bodies and secrets. While Titus tries to track down a killer hiding in plain sight while balancing daily duties like protecting Confederate pride marchers, he must face what it means to be a black man wearing a police uniform in the American South. It sounds absolutely harrowing and I definitely think that this is a strong contender for a book of the month selection. Another repeat author that they could feature in June is Ashley Audrain. Her newest release, The Whispers, is coming out. She wrote The Push, which was pretty popular when it was released, but her newest release is coming out and it is definitely getting a lot of buzz. This follows the Loverly family who sit by the hospital bed of their young son who is in a coma after falling from his bedroom window in the middle of the night. Mother Whitney will not speak to anyone. Back home, their friends and neighbors are left in shock, each confronting their own role in the events that led up to what happened that terrible night. The story spins out over the course of one week and the alternating voices of the women in each family as they are forced to face the secrets within the walls of their own homes and the uncomfortable truths that connect them all to one another. Set against the heart-wrenching drama of what will happen to Xavier, who hangs between life and death or a life changed forever. The Whispers is a novel about what happens when we put our needs ahead of our children's. So overall, this definitely sounds far more domestic in nature than it does suspense thrillery, but it also sounds like there could be a little bit of a mystery behind what actually happened to Xavier. Like, did he really fall from his bedroom window? Was he pushed? What's going on? And I think those secrets are going to be revealed. Like I said, Ashley Audrain would be a repeat author for Book of the Month. And since this is getting a lot of buzz, I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibility that this is one that would be featured. And then the final one that I want to talk about in the mystery thriller suspense realm is Dead 11 by Jimmy Giuliano. This is one that again is getting a lot of buzz and it sounds very unusual because it's set on an island that is very stuck on one particular day in 1994. Clifford Island. When Willow Stone finds these words written on the floor of her deceased son's bedroom, she's perplexed. She's never heard of it before but soon learns it's a tiny island off Wisconsin's Door County Peninsula 200 miles from Willow's home. Why would her son write this on his floor? Determined to find answers, Willow sets out for the island. After a few days there, Willow realizes this place is not normal. Everyone seems to be stuck on a particular day in 1994. They were outdated clothing, avoid modern technology, and perhaps most mystifyingly, watch the O.J. Simpson car chase every evening. When she asks questions, people are evasive, but she learns one thing. Close your curtains at night. Five weeks after Willow arrives on the island, she disappears. Willow's brother Harper comes to Clifford searching for his sister, and when he learns the truth that this island is far more sinister than anyone could have imagined, he is determined to blow the whole thing open. So I think this is a book that is meant to kind of have you questioning whether it is the island itself that it's doing it, or if there's somebody else on the island. What is their obsession with this particular day in 1994? This is one that was not on my radar at all until I started researching potential book of the month selections for June. This seems like a lot of people are hyped for this story based on the buzz that it is getting. I think there's a high probability that it could be a selection for June for book of the month. Moving on into the romance category, I actually only have two. One of course is Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. Allie Hazelwood's two other stemnist romances have been featured as monthly curated selections for book of the month and I have no doubt that this one could definitely be the same. It is for sure a highly anticipated release by a lot of Allie Hazelwood fans. I am hoping that this is better than Love on the Brain, which was kind of a disappointment in 
and also just kind of basically a repeat of her first book, The Love Hypothesis, which I enjoyed immensely. But after reading the synopsis of Love Theoretically, it definitely sounds a little bit more complicated than some of her other novels. It's following theoretical physicist Elsie Hannaway. She's an adjunct professor toiling away at grading labs and teaching thermodynamics in the hopes of landing tenure. By other day, Elsie makes up for her non-existent paycheck by offering her services as a fake girlfriend, tapping into her expertly honed people-pleasing skills to embody whichever version of herself the client needs. Honestly, it's a pretty sweet gig until her carefully constructed Elsie verse comes crashing down. Jack Smith, the annoyingly attractive and broody older brother of her favorite client, turns out to be the cold-hearted experimental physicist who ruined her mentor's career and undermined the reputation of theorists everywhere. And that same Jack who now sits on the hiring committee at MIT, right between Elsie and her dream job. Elsie is prepared for an all-out war of scholarly sabotage, but those long penetrating looks, not having to be anything other than her true self when she's with him, will falling into an experimentalist's orbit finally tempt her to put her most guarded theories on love into practice. So it definitely sounds like there could be another hate to love situation going on here. I feel like it's probably going to be fairly predictable, you know, happily ever after and all of that good stuff. And as I mentioned, her first two books were curated selections for book of the month. And I have no reason to doubt that this one could be as well, or at the very least an add-on selection. The next one is the newest release from Ashley Poston called The Seven Year Slip. To my knowledge, Ashley Poston has not been a featured author on book of the month, but this one is getting a lot of hype, especially after the popularity of The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. So I haven't read that one, but I believe it features ghosts. And this one features kind of like a time travel situation. So it sounds like her romances definitely have speculative elements to it. This follows our main character Clementine. And one day she finds a strange man standing in the kitchen of her late aunt's apartment, a man with kind eyes, a southern drawl, and a taste for lemon pies. Kind of man that before it all, she could have fallen head over heels for, and she might again, except he exists in the past, seven years ago to be exact. And she quite literally lives seven years in his future. Her aunt always said the apartment was a pinch in time, a place where moments blended together like watercolors. And Clementine knows that if she lets her heart fall, she'll be doomed. After all, love is never a matter of time, but a matter of timing. So this actually sounds really, really sweet. So I think this would be a good one to give a try. So if this were a book of the month selection, I definitely think that I would go ahead and grab it up. I think again, there is a strong possibility for this one. And it would be even more special because again, I don't believe that they've ever featured her on book of the month. So it would be extra special. So I'm going to keep my eye out for this one. All right, we only have two categories left literary slash contemporary and historical fiction, but these are actually big categories for June. There are quite a lot of releases and quite a few that I did not feature in my new release video. Within the literary and contemporary genre, ones that I have already talked about include Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand. She is going to be a repeat author for Book of the Month, so this again is not outside of the realm of possibility. My understanding of this story is it follows a woman whose life has kind of fallen apart. She had a really bad blowout with her husband and then he ended up being killed in a car accident and she gets the idea of a Five Star Weekend where she kind of invites the best friend from each of the period of her life, like teenagers, 20s, 30s, 40s, and so on, on kind of like this vacation. They're going to be on Nantucket because that's where all of Ellen Hildebrand's stories are set, but there's going to be a lot of clashing personalities because these are best friends from different portions and the main character's life. And there is one person there that shows up that doesn't really have a connection to the main character or any of the other best friends, and she has secrets of her own that she has been carrying. So I think that there's going to be something that kind of ties all of this together. I'm not really sure what the trajectory is supposed to be, but if you love Ellen Hildebrand, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw her book as a book of the month selection. Another one that I talked about was The Wife App by Carolyn Mackler. This is actually a really interesting premise of wives who are very tired of being taken advantage of and they try to monetize the mental load that wives have in order to kind of get back at their husbands who have underappreciated them or have done some not so nice things to them. I actually really enjoyed the concept of the story when I read it and I would be very interested to see it as a book of the month selection even though it's not getting the best ratings. It's only got like a 3.7 right now and this book hasn't even been released so that means the early reviews are not great but I just think the concept is so imaginative and inventive and I would be very intrigued to see this as a book of the month selection. The next three in the literary contemporary section are actually three that I did not talk about in my new releases so I'm gonna go ahead and read the synopses of these books for you here. The first is a book called The Wind Knows My Name by Isabel Allende. Vienna 1938. Samuel Adler was six years old when his family disappeared during Kristallnacht, the night their family lost everything. Samuel's mother secured a spot for him on the latest kinder transport train out of Nazi-occupied Austria to the United Kingdom, which he boarded alone carrying nothing but a change of clothes and his violin. 2019, eight decades later, Anita Diaz, a blind seven-year-old girl and her mother board another train, fleeing looming danger in El Salvador and seeking refuge in the United States. However, their arrival coincides with the new family separation policy and Anita finds herself alone at a camp in Nogales. She escapes through her trips to Azabahar, a magical world of the imagination she created with her sister back home. Anita's case is assigned to Selena Duran, a young social worker who enlists the help of a promising lawyer from one of San Francisco's top law firms. Together, they discovered that Anita has another family member in the United States, Leticia Cordero, who is employed at the
at the home of now 86 year old Samuel Adler linking these two lives. Spanning time and place, The Wind Knows My Name is both a testament to the sacrifices that parents make and a love letter to the children who survived the most unfathomable dangers and never stopped dreaming. So this also sounds like it could definitely be placed in the historical fiction category. I do think that there is a lot of overlap between historical fiction and literary fiction so I could possibly combine those genres but for right now we're going to go ahead and keep it with contemporary slash literary fiction. The next one I want to talk to you about is called Night Bloom. It's by Peace Adzo Medi. I apologize if I've completely butchered the pronunciation of that name. When Selassie and Akorfa were young girls in Ghana, they were more than just cousins, they were inseparable. Selassie was exuberant and funny, Akorfa quiet and studious. They would do anything for each other, imploring their parents to let them be together, sharing their secrets, desires, and private jokes. Then Selassie begins to change, becoming hostile and quiet. Her grades suffer and she builds a space around herself, shutting Akorfa out. Meanwhile, Akorfa is accepted to an American university with the goal of becoming a doctor. Although hopeful that she can create a fuller life as a woman in America, she discovers the insidious ways that racism places obstacles in her path once she leaves Ghana. It takes a crisis to bring the friends back together when Selassie's secret revealed and Akorfi forced to reckon with her role in their estrangement. A riveting depiction of class and family in Ghana, a compelling exploration of memory and an eye-opening story of life as an African-born woman in the United States, Night Bloom is above all a gripping and beautifully written novel attesting to the strength of female bonds in the face of societies that would prefer to silence women. This is one that sounds beautiful and harrowing. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful depiction of friendship. Also some discussion of systemic racism and the obstacles that throws in the way of our main character. So I think that this is a strong contender for a book of the month monthly selection or add-on. And the final one in the contemporary literary fiction genre I want to talk to you about today is Little Monsters by Adrian Brodeur. This definitely sounds like it's going to be a family drama over anything else. It follows Ken and Abby Gardner who lost their mother when they were small and have been haunted by her absence ever since. Their father, Adam, a brilliant oceanographer, raised them mostly on his own in the remote home on Cape Cod where the attachment between Ken and Abby deepened into something complicated. And as adults, their relationship is strained. Okay, I'm interested to know how the relationship deepened. I'm wondering if this is going to get a little bit incestuous. I don't know, but that's kind of what it insinuated. A little bit flowers in the attic, if you will. Now, years later, the siblings' lives are still deeply entwined. Ken is a successful businessman with political ambitions and a picture-perfect family, and Abby is a talented visual artist who depends on her brother's goodwill in part because he owns the studio where she lives and works. As the novel opens, Adam is approaching his 70th birthday, staring down his mortality and fading relevance. He has always managed his bipolar disorder with medication, but he's determined to make one last scientific breakthrough and so he has secretly stopped taking his pills which he knows will infuriate his children. Meanwhile Abby and Ken are both harboring secrets of their own and there is a new person on the periphery of the family, Steph, who doesn't make her connection known. As Adam grows more attuned to the frequencies of the deep sea and less so to the people around him, Ken and Abby each plan the elaborate gifts they will present to their father on his birthday, jostling for primacy in this small family unit. Set in the fraught summer of 2016 and drawing on the biblical tale of Cain and Abel, okay that's a twist, Little Monsters is an absorbing sharp absorbed family story by a writer who knows Cape Cod inside and out. All right, so that definitely sounds like a very twisted family drama, secret lies, all of the good stuff that comes along with a solid family drama. This sounds exactly like something Book of the Month would make for one of its curated selections, so I'm excited to see if this one pops up. All right, and then moving on into the final category we are going to discuss today, and that is historical fiction. Only one that I had on my radar prior to this video was The Paris Daughter by Kristen Harmel. She is a pretty popular historical fiction author, and I think that this could be a strong possibility for Book of the Month as well. I don't believe that she would be a repeat author for Book of the Month, so this would be the first time that they've ever selected a Kristen Harmel, but like I said, she is a pretty popular historical fiction author. From what I understand about the synopsis of this, it follows two young mothers, Elise and Juliet. They both have young daughters that play together, but Elise becomes a target of German occupation, and in order to keep her daughter safe, she puts her into the care of Juliet. But when everything kind of settles down and Elise goes looking for her daughter at Juliet's bookstore, she finds it is in rubble and Juliet and her daughter and Juliet's daughter are nowhere to be found. And so this is her desperate search to find Juliet and her daughter and to figure out what happened to them all. As is typical with a World War II historical fiction, this sounds absolutely harrowing and, and I would love to see it as a book of the month selection. One that is coming out in June that also has a high probability of being a book of the month selection because it would be a repeat author is called The Spectacular by Fiona Davis. She wrote The Magnolia Palace, which was a book of the month selection. I wouldn't doubt that she would be featured again. This is set in New York City, 1956. 19 year old Marion is over the moon to have been selected to be one of the Rockettes, Radio City Music Hall's glamorous precision dancing troupe. It's an honor to perform in the world's most spectacular theater, an art deco masterpiece. But with four shows a day, as well as grueling rehearsals, not to mention exacting standards of perfection to live up to, Marion quickly realizes that the life of a Rockette has both extraordinary highs and devastating lows. Then one night, a bomb explodes in the theater. It's only the latest in a string of explosions around the city orchestrated by a person the press has nicknamed the Big Apple Bomber. They have been terrorizing the citizens of New York for 16 years by planting bombs in popular crowded spaces. With the public in an uproar over the lack of any real leads, after a year years-long manhunt.
on. The police, at Marion's urging, turn in desperation to a radical new technique. Psychological profiling. Okay, all right. As Marion finds herself pulled deeper into the investigation, she realizes that as much as she's been training herself to blend in, performing in perfect unison with all the other identical Rockettes, if she hopes to catch the bomber, she'll need to stand out and take a terrifying risk. But she may be forced to sacrifice everything she's worked for, as well as the people she loves the most. Okay, so that's really interesting. It sounds like this book is going to dive into the very early days of psychological profiling, which is very, very interesting to me. It definitely has the intrigue there. So I wouldn't doubt this would be another book of the month selection. An author that I've heard a lot about, but I've never actually read from is Lisa C. Her newest release, Lady Tan's Circle of Women, is coming out in June. And this seems to be a very top contender for a book of the month selection. I don't remember offhand whether Lisa C. has been featured on book of the month before, but it sounds like there is a high probability that this could be there as well. This is inspired by the true story of a woman physician from 15th century China. According to Confucius, an educated woman is a worthless woman. But Tan Yunxian, born into an elite family yet haunted by death, separations, and loneliness, is being raised by her grandparents to be of use. Her grandmother is one of only a handful of female doctors in China, and she teaches Yunxian the pillars of Chinese medicine for examinations, looking, listening, touching, and asking, something a man can never do with a female patient. From a young age, Yunxian learns about women's illnesses, many of which relate to childbearing, alongside a young midwife in training, Mei Ling. The two girls find fast friendship and a mutual purpose, despite the prohibition that a doctor should never touch blood, while a midwife comes in frequent contact with it, and they vow to be forever friends, sharing in each other's joys and struggles. No mud, no lotus, they tell themselves. From adversity, beauty can bloom. But when Yunxian is sent into an arranged marriage, her mother-in-law forbids her from seeing Mei Ling and from helping the women and girls in the household. Yunxian is to act like a proper wife, embroider bound foot slippers, pluck instruments, recite poetry, give birth to sons, and stay forever within the walls of the family compound, the garden of fragrant delights. How might a woman like Yunxian break free of these traditions, go on to treat women and girls from every level of society, and lead a life of such importance that many of her remedies are still used five centuries later? How might the power of friendship support or complicate these efforts? Lady Tan's Circle of Women is a captivating story of women helping other women. It is also the triumphant reimagining of the life of a woman who was remarkable in the Ming Dynasty and would be considered remarkable today. So that actually sounds quite fascinating. It is definitely a topic I personally have never read anything about, so I understand why this one is getting a lot of hype, and I wouldn't be surprised if this was a book of the month selection. All right, and then the very last historical fiction pick I wanted to talk to you about today is The Last Lifeboat by Hazel Gaynor. 1940 Ken, Alice King is not brave or daring. She's happiest finding adventure through the safe pages of a book. But times of war demand courage, and as the threat of German invasion looms, a plane crash near her home awakens a strength in Alice she'd long forgotten. Determined to do her part, she finds a role perfectly suited to her experience as a school teacher to help evacuate Britain's children overseas. 1940 London, Lily Nichols once dreamed of using her mathematical talents for more than tabulating the cost of groceries, but life and love chartered her a different course. With two lively children and a loving husband, Lily's humble home is her world until war tears everything asunder. With her husband gone and bombs raining down, Lily is faced with an impossible choice. Keep her son and daughter close, knowing she may not be able to protect them, or enroll them in a risky evacuation scheme where safety awaits so very far away. When a Nazi U-boat torpedoes the SS Carlisle, carrying a ship of children to Canada, a single lifeboat is left adrift in the storm-tossed Atlantic. Alice and Lily, strangers to each other, one on land, the other at sea, will quickly become one another's very best hopes as their lives are fatefully entwined. Oh boy, okay, so that sounds really, really harrowing. That sounds fantastic. I would love to see this as a book of the month selection. This is definitely one that is getting a lot of buzz as well. I have never read a Hazel Gaynor, but I have heard of her before. And so I, again, this is another one that I wouldn't be surprised is a book of the month selection, hence why I have added it to this list. I guess I didn't need to say, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a book of the month selection because that's what this whole video is. Books I think are going to be book of the month selection. Anyway, y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I wanted to talk to you about today that I think could either be part of the five to seven monthly curated picks that Book of the Month is going to release on June 1st or as part of their add-on selections as well. And I'm excited to see if I'm right about any of these. Please comment down below and let me know if you are a Book of the Month subscriber and what you hope to see for June or if you think there are any books that I didn't mention that are absolutely going to be part of the June selections for Book of the Month. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos.